So I can't remember the last time Corsair released an air cooler, but apparently they released the A50 and A70 air coolers a good decade ago. Well, today, Corsair's buying back into the air cooling game with the A500. Now, some of you may ask, what's exciting about an air cooler? Why should Corsair even bother, especially when it's got a whole range of well-reviewed all-in-one coolers under its belt? Well, the benefit of air coolers are quite understated. Um, the only mechanical parts in an air cooler are the fans on the cooler itself, whereas all-in-one coolers have water pumps in addition to the fans mounted on the radiator. This means air coolers have fewer points of failure and therefore are statistically more reliable compared to AIOs. That's to say, if an air cooler can do the job, we'll always recommend choosing an air cooler over an all-in-one cooler. So I guess the question is, can the A500 do the job? Let's take a closer look at the Corsair A500. First up, let's talk specs. The A500 sports four direct copper heat pipes leading up to a massive aluminum heatsink, which probably makes up for most of its 1.4 kg mass. It comes with Corsair's XTM50 thermal compound pre-applied in a grid pattern, so you don't have to worry about uneven thermal paste application. And there's even another tube included in case you need to reinstall your A500. The cooler ships with two pre-installed 120mm ML120 fans that go up to 2400 RPM, moving up to 75 cubic feet per minute of airflow. Compatibility-wise, it'll support your typical Intel LGA1151 socket, AMD AM4 socket, as well as the Intel LGA2066 high-end desktop socket. It's got a height of 169mm, which is not small by any means, so you'll need to be extra careful regarding case compatibility. The A500's got a maximum RAM height clearance of 45mm, but thanks to Corsair's innovative slide and lock fan mounting mechanism, you'll be able to slide the fans up and down without having to fiddle with the annoying fan clips. With this mounting mechanism, you'll be able to easily remove the fans to access the RAM underneath and also adjust the height of the fans to accommodate taller memory modules. The A500 was really easy to install on my ASUS Z370F Gaming and LG 1151 board. Uh, simply pop on the back plate and secure it with the four included standoffs. Next, install and secure the mounting brackets. Um, both metal brackets should be perpendicular to your RAM slots. Subsequently, align the A500 with the threaded posts on the mounting bracket. Now this is a really nice touch because it gives you a tactile indication of whether the cooler is positioned correctly as opposed to having to visually gauge whether or not the mounting points are well aligned. Now finally, gradually tighten both spring screws in an alternating fashion and there you have it, you've installed your A500. Now, on to performance. Instead of using the hottest Intel Core i9-10980XE, we thought we'd use something a little more commonplace, the i9-9900K, to see if the majority of you could benefit from the A500. Our test bench included an ASUS Z370F Gaming at BIOS Revision 2401, 32GB of Corsair Vengeance LPX running at 3200MHz, and a GB RX 5700 XT OC with the latest AMD driver 20.2.2 installed. Now let's take a look at the results. To start, we simulated a standard user load by locking the i9-9900K to 3.6GHz at a 1.15V core voltage. Now, to get a measure of the 9900K's baseline idle temperature, we left each setup on idle in Windows for 15 minutes. Now we're comparing the A500 to a competing Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 and a 240mm all-in-one cooler from Silverstone for reference. At idle, you can see the A500 comes in at 34 degrees Celsius, with the Dark Rock Pro 4 just slightly warmer at 36 degrees Celsius. Uh, the Silverstone remained the coolest at 31 degrees. With the 9900K running at 3.6 GHz, we ran Ada64 Extreme's system stability test with the options to stress CPU, FPU, and cache turned on. Now we ran this test for 30 minutes and set each cooler to its maximum fan speed to get a sense of the maximum cooling potentials. But we see all three coolers doing quite decently here, with the A500 coming in at 63 degrees, the Dark Rock Pro 4 being a little warmer at 67 degrees, and the Silverstone All-in-One remaining the coolest at 62 degrees. It looks like all three coolers hold their weight as standard user loads, but we wanted to really push the coolers to their limits and to give you an indication of each cooler's performance when used with an overclocked CPU. So for this next test, we locked the 9900K to 4.9GHz at a 1.28V core voltage and repeated the earlier tests. Uh, we don't see significant differences in idle temperatures, but the coolers were truly put to the test once the load was introduced. Here, we see the A500 running at 84 degrees Celsius, the Dark Rock Pro 4 coming in hot at 91 degrees Celsius, and the Silverstone only one running just slightly cooler than the A500 at 83 degrees Celsius. It's important to note that we didn't observe any thermal throttling in all our tests, so we can rule out any ceiling effects. 
Ambient noise was measured at about 39 decibels, and each cooler didn't introduce very much noise when the system was running at idle. However, once the load was introduced, the A500's twin 2400 RPM fans quickly spun up, and we see the A500 quickly shooting up to a resulting 64 decibels, with the Silverstone 240mm on one coming close at 59 decibels. Uh, the Dark Rock Pro 4 remained near whisper quiet at 45 decibels, to a point where I actually wondered if the fans were indeed set to run at maximum or not. The final piece of the puzzle needs to be the price. I will leave the Silverstone cooler out of this one because it's a product in a different class of coolers altogether. However, the A500 comes in at 159 Singapore dollars, whereas the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 comes in at 149 Singapore dollars. And I guess this is a good time to give our overall impressions on the A500. First, I found the Corsair A500 significantly easier to install, especially when compared to the Dark Rock Pro 4, which required users to follow a specific set of steps. For instance, with the A500, I simply installed the mounting brackets, tightened the cooler onto the brackets, and I was done. Now, just to give you a sense of how complicated other cooler installations can be, uh, when I attempted to install the Dark Rock Pro 4, without the manual of course, uh, I wanted to pre-install the fan in the middle before mounting the cooler, uh, on, because, you know, clipping the fan on afterwards is usually such a hassle. Um, but I later realized that I needed the space in the middle of the cooler to be empty in order to mount uh, the cooler, so that was a bit of a problem for me. Uh, I guess this was my fault, but still, the fact remains. The A500 was clearly made with easy installation in mind, evidenced by Corsair's new slide and lock fan mounting mechanism. The A500 performed quite similarly to a 240mm all-in-one, and significantly better than the Dark Rock Pro 4. However, it was noisier and a little more expensive, so I guess the question is, who did Corsair make the A500 for? The answer is clear to me. If you don't install CPU coolers every other day, you don't mind the extra noise, don't mind paying a bit more and you know are a Corsair fan, excuse the pun, uh, the A500 was made for you. Just pay attention to the CPU cooler height limitations of your chassis and you should be good to go. Thanks for watching guys, we hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for all notifications. Let us know down below what you want to see next and we'll see you in the next video. Peace out.